In this lesson, we're going to be looking at L'Hopital's rule. Uh, L'Hopital's rule was not actually developed by Guillaume de L'Hopital, um, who's uh, named the rule bears, but rather Johann Bernoulli, who was uh, L'Hopital's teacher. Uh, Bernoulli signed an agreement that uh, any discoveries that um, came about from uh, him teaching uh, de L'Hopital um, were free, were free for the taking from uh, Guillaume de L'Hopital. So uh, de uh, L'Hopital gets credit for this rule, uh, bears his name. He did give credit in his book, you know, he, he you know, expressed his undying gratitude to uh, Bernoulli, um, but uh, it's de L'Hopital's name that this rule bears, not Bernoulli's. But if Bernoulli didn't like it, he shouldn't have signed it. So anyway, um, we're going to take a look at L'Hopital's rule and um, very handy dandy little rule uh, in dealing with limits. Now we've learned how to you know calculate out limits um, but there, you may come across some limits where it would be very difficult to, to find um, by any other means. Um, so now you're going to have another tool in your toolbox. So first of all let's take a look at a limit that we do know how to deal with and that's the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. If you use direct substitution, in other words you just plug in the the 2's there which would be fine except in this case. Uh, so we have uh, 2 would be, would be 2 squared minus 4 over uh, 2 minus 2, that would give us 4 minus 4, which is 0 in the numerator, and 2 minus 2 is also 0 in the denominator. That's not the limit, is, that's not 0, uh, that's the indeterminate form. There we go. And all the indeterminate form means is that uh, you needed to simplify further before you substituted and took the limit. In this case, what you needed to do was factor. If you simply factored the numerator, x squared minus 4 factors to x minus 2x plus 2, um, you could see that well, you've got this competing factor that's going to uh, cause a problem there. And you could reduce and then substitute and no problem, the limit's 4. So we learned that when we get the indeterminate form, all that means is, is we need to simplify a little bit further before we substitute and take the limit. In this case, we needed to factor and cancel. Sometimes to be able to uh, cancel a competing factor, uh, we needed to use another method. Um, in this case, we're going to look at multiplying by a conjugate. So again, if you were to just sub use direct substitution, to find the limit, so the limit is x approaches 4, and you plugged in, you'd have 3 minus the square root of uh, 4 plus 5 all over 4 minus 4, and that would give us 3 minus the square root of 9, square root of 9 is 3, all over 0, and you get 0 over, ugh, you get a very strange looking 0 over 0, which we know is the indeterminate form. I need to put my typing everywhere where that board gets all funky and leave all the extra space for my writing. All right, so now we're going to try this again, but we're going to simplify. And we're going to simplify by multiplying by the conjugate of that radical that's in the numerator there. So we'd have the limit as x approaches 4 of 3 minus square root of x plus 5 all over x minus 4. The conjugate for 3 minus the square root of x plus 5 is 3 plus the square root of x plus 5. All right, so when we go to multiply, 3 times 3 is 9. And the, we multiply the outer terms, 3 times the square root of x plus 5 uh, and th 3 times negative square root of x plus 5. We get 3 square roots of x plus 5 minus 3 square roots of x plus 5. They're going to cancel each other out, right? Um, but we will be left with the last terms, square root of uh, x plus 5 times negative square root of x plus 5. So that would give us minus square root of x plus 5 squared. And then the last thing we want to do is distribute in the denominator because we're looking to factor. 
3 plus the square root of x plus 5. Square and square root are going to cancel, so that's going to give us the limit as x approaches 4 of 9 minus x minus 5. Don't forget to distribute the negative to both terms there. And then we're still not going to distribute in the denominator. 3 plus the square root of x plus 5. 9 minus uh, x minus 5 is uh, negative x min uh, plus 4. So we have the limit as x approaches 4 of negative x plus 4 over x minus 4 times 3 plus the square root of x plus 5. And now we see where the problem is. So if up here in the numerator we simply factored out a negative 1, we'd have an x minus 4, and there's an x minus 4 in the denominator. We can cancel those out. So we have the limit as x approaches 4 of negative 1 over 3 plus the square root of x plus 5. And now we can just substitute in. We would have negative 1 in the numerator and in the denominator 3 plus the square root of 4 plus 5. That's the square root of 9. And square root of 9 is 3. That would give us negative 1 over 3 plus 3, or 6. So there's our limit, negative 1, 6. Okay. Well, all it was was some algebra. Oops. There's my nice, neat typing. So now we're going to look at this things in my way. <laughs> Using derivatives to determine limits of a function. Now, this is called L'Hopital's rule. The only time we can use L'Hopital's rule is if we have um, an algebraic fraction. In other words, we have a function in the numerator and a function in the denominator, and we can take the derivative of those. Okay? And when we say a function, there has to be a variable in there, in both the function that's in the numerator and the function that's in the denominator. So for instance, here, 3 minus the square root of x plus 5, that's a function. Square, uh, excuse me, x minus 4, that's a function. Back here, x squared minus 4, that's a function. x minus 2, that's a function. We couldn't use L'Hopital's rule if instead of an x minus 2, there was just a 2 there. The other thing is it has to be, um, when we use direct substitution, we have to get the indeterminate form. So if you have a ratio of two functions, and when you go to take the limit by direct substitution, you get the indeterminate form. You can use what's called L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule, uh, to use L'Hopital's rule um, to find the limit, we're going to take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the denominator, and take the limit of using that. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay. So in layperson's language, if we have a limit of an algebraic fraction, we have function in the numerator, function in the denominator, and when we evaluate the limit, we get the indeterminate form. 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, negative infinity over negative infinity, etc. And there's more uh, indeterminate forms. You can take the derivative of the numerator, a derivative of the denominator, and take the limit using the derivatives. If, when you, take, when you find the limit um, using the derivative in the numerator and the derivative of the denominator, and it gives you something that's not indeterminate, that's your limit. That Take that value as your limit. If, when you go to take the derivative, you again get uh, the indeterminate form, you can repeat the process. In other words, take the derivative of the numerator and then take the derivative of the denominator again, and keep doing that until you get something that's not giving you the indeterminate form. And you can do that as many times as you like. Okay. And, that, and that's using L'Hopital's rule to take a limit. Very handy when we have a limit that's very difficult to take otherwise. Or, in this case, a limit that's not very difficult to take otherwise, but I want to show you L'Hopital's rule. So here are the limits we, we did earlier. Um, the limit is x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And the limit is x approaches 4 of 3 minus the square root of x plus 5 over x minus 4. So we're going to take the limit this time. By taking the derivative of x squared minus 4. And the derivative of x minus 2 and evaluating that limit instead. 
So the derivative of x squared minus 4, derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of a constant is just 0. Uh, in the denominator there, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of the constant is 0. So now we've got the, oops, and I should have written the word limit in there. So we have the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x, no reason to have the minus zeros or the 1 in the denominator there. And if we plug in now, we get 2 times 2, which is 4, just what we got before. Boy, that 0 is really bothering me. Now, let's try it with this one. All right, so we have, uh, to find the limit, we're going to take the limit as x approaches 4 of the derivative oops, of 3 minus the square root of x plus 5 and the derivative of x minus 4 alright so I'm going to re actually rewrite that there um, so instead of square root of x, minus, x plus 5, I'm going to rewrite that as x plus 5 to the 1 half power. That's a little easier to work with. All right, so the derivative of 3 is just 0. And the derivative of x plus 5 to the 1 half is the chain rule. Um, so the 1 half comes in front. So right now it's actually like the, the power rule. So the uh, derivative of blop to the one-half power is just one-half blop to the negative one-half power. In this case, blop is x plus 5. Times the derivative of x plus 5. Derivative of x plus 5 is just 1. Derivative of x is 1. In the denominator there, we would have the derivative of x minus 4. Derivative of x is 1. And the derivative, derivative of negative 4 is just 0. So let's just make that look a little nicer there. We have the limit as x approaches 4. We have, uh, in the numerator, just a negative 1. In the denominator, we have 2 times the square root of x plus 5. Now we can substitute in. So we have negative 1 over 2 times the square root of 4 plus 5, which is negative 1 times 2 square roots of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have negative 1 time over, excuse me, negative 1 over 2 times 3, which is negative 1 6, just what we got before. Uh, in, the in the first example, and I'm probably whether you factored and reduced or whether you used L'Hopital's rules, about, just about the same. In the second example, maybe it was a little easier using L'Hopital's rule and taking the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. But either way, you got the same answer. Here we have uh, two trig functions, and we've learned that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is just 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is 0. And now we're going to learn why using L'Hopital's rule. Um, one little important side note is when you're using L'Hopital's rule, this is not the quotient rule. You're evaluating a limit by taking the derivative of the top and bottom. Okay? Uh, it's just another way to find a limit when you've got an indeterminate form. So if we were to use direct substitution in the first example, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, um, we'd get 0. Sine of 0 is 0, and you plug in 0 for x, you get 0. Using L'Hopital's rule, so limit as x approaches 0, we're going to take the derivative of sine of x over the derivative of x and evaluate that instead. Derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x, and the derivative of x is 1. And if we substitute now, we get cosine of 0, which is just 1. That's, the, uh, that's on the x-axis there. Uh, so cosine deals with the x-axis, sine deals with the y-axis. Um, and that 0, uh, the cosine of 0 is just 1. And if we look at the second one here, we've got the limit 
We're going to take the derivative of 1 minus cosine x. And that says x uh, approaches 0. And the derivative of x. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of 1 minus cosine x, cosine x. The derivative of 1 is 0 minus. Derivative of cosine x is a negative sine x. And the derivative of x is just 1. So this is really just positive sine x. Uh, and so if we have sine of 0, that is indeed 0. Same as I wrote up there. So now you know why using L'Hopital's rule, um, the derivative of sine x over x is 1, and the derivative as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is 0. And when we have more complicated trig functions um, that where we get the indeterminate form and we have uh, a function in the numerator and a function in the denominator, L'Hopital's rule may come uh, to our rescue in being able to find those limits a lot easier. Now, if you don't, you can only use this if you have an algebraic fraction, uh, but you still might be able to use L'Hopital's rule if you don't have an algebraic fraction. Well, that sounds like, a, uh, like I just contradicted myself. You can if you can rewrite the original function so it is a fraction. Okay? So if what you're given is not a fraction, you can rewrite it as a fraction, and when you evaluate, you get the indeterminate form, you can still use L'Hopital's rule. So for instance, here we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x times natural log of x. Okay? Um, this one, well, that's a product. Okay? It looks a little bit tricky there. Um, but we can rewrite that. I haven't rewritten down there. But um, we can rewrite x as, so we have natural log here of uh, x times x. We can rewrite that as natural log of x divided by 1 over x. Because dividing by 1 over x is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing by a fraction, same as multiplying by a reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 over x is x. So they're, they're the exact same thing. Uh, but it allows us to maybe evaluate uh, a limit in, in an easier fashion. All right, so. This is indeterminate, uh, the, the, uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of natural log of x is negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is infinity. What's negative infinity over infinity? Uh, it's not necessarily negative 1. They don't cancel each other out like that. Um, they are indeterminate. So let's use L'Hopital's rule in this case. So we have the limit as x approaches 0, and we're going to take the derivative of natural log of x and the derivative of 1 over x. Remember, 1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1. I'm going to rewrite it like that. All right, so the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And the derivative of x to the negative 1 is going to be negative 1 x to the uh, negative 2. Okay. Uh, we probably don't want to plug in a 0 into 1 over x, so that's going to go to uh, infinity, right? It's going to keep getting smaller and smaller. Um, let's rewrite this and see if this gets any nicer. All right, so we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the negative 1. And then we're dividing by, I'm sorry, I just put you on pause. I was running out of space there. All right, so I just simplified that a little bit for us. And I'll just kind of go over that. So uh, I just rewrote that negative x to the negative 2 power is negative 1 over x squared. Uh, and then dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1, negative 1 over x squared is the same as multiplying by negative x squared. Uh, and then that simplifies to negative x. So now if we substitute, well, we get negative 0. That's, that's just 0. So here, a, a tricky limit 
to figure out the limit as x approaches 0 of x natural log of x is actually just 0. Um, and you might not have figured that out looking at the indeterminate form there. So um, L'Hopital's rule comes in real handy when you've got a limit that's a little bit uh, trickier to work with um, by taking the, the limit of the derivatives. So you can apply L'Hopital's rule as many times as necessary as long as the fraction is still indeterminate. Okay? Uh, all of these listed below there are other indeterminate forms. Okay? Uh, infinity minus infinity is not zero. What is it? I don't know. One to the infinity power. Okay? All of these are, are ones that are indeterminate. You can use L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule is really easy to work with. So uh, L'Hopital's rule can also be used to find limits uh, to help with finding asymptotes for functions. So if when you're doing curve sketching to find your horizontal asymptote, you can also use L'Hopital's rule. Let's do a few more examples together. So I have the limit of 1 minus cosine x over x plus x squared. First thing you want to do is substitute and make sure you've got the indeterminate form. So if I substitute, I have 1 minus cosine of 0 over 0 plus 0 squared. And that would be 1 minus uh, cosine of 0 is 1. And 0 plus 0 squared, you get the big old 0 over 0 there. Okay? That's the indeterminate form. So that means we can use L'Hopital's rule. There we go. And to use L'Hopital's rule, we're going to take the derivative of 1 minus cosine x and the derivative of x plus x squared and evaluate that instead. So the derivative of 1 minus cosine x is derivative of, of cosine x is negative sine x. So if we have a derivative of 1 is 0. So negative, si negative, negative sine x is just a positive sine x. And the denominator there, uh, derivative of x is 1, derivative of x squared is 2x. And now we can try plugging into this instead. So now we have sine 0 over uh, 1 plus 2 times 0. Sine of 0 is just 0, and 1 plus 0 is 1, and that is 0. Find the derivative of this one. Now we could multiply by the conjugate. That would work. But let's, let's see if we can use L'Hopital's rule. First of all, we have to make sure it's indeterminate. So if we substitute it in, we would have the square root of 1 plus 0 minus 1 over 0. And square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So using L'Hopital's rule. We, take, we find the limit as x approaches 0 by taking the derivative of, I'm going to rewrite that, of, oops, excuse me, 1 plus x to the 1 half power minus 1 over the derivative of x. So that would give us the limit as x approaches 0. Derivative of the um, 1 plus x to the 1 half would be 1 half 1 plus x to the negative 1 half. Derivative of 1 plus x is just 1. Derivative of x is 1. And in the bottom there, derivative of x is just 1. Okay. All right, so that's just going to give us the limit as x approaches 0 of uh, in the numerator, we've got a 1. In the denominator, we have 2 times the square root of 1 plus x. And now we can just substitute in. So we have 1 over 2 times 1 plus 0, and that's going to give us 1 half. And you can check it out. You can use a conjugate and see you get, you get the exact same answer. Okay, here we have, if we substitute in, uh, we'll have, just to make, we always have to make sure we have the indeterminate form. So if we substitute in here, um, as x approaches infinity, the natural log of x is going to infinity. 
uh, and in the denominator there, the 2 times the square root of infinity of x as it goes to infinity, that's also going to infinity. Um, so here, both of those are just going to keep on growing without uh, bounds, right? Because the natural log of x looks like that. And that kind of looks a little bit like a square root. Sort of looks like that too, although they're not the same values by any stretch. Um, they, they will keep increasing. So it's the indeterminate form. We can find the limit by using L'Hopital's rule. I'm trying to watch my time here so this, this file doesn't get too big. All right, so we're going to take the, we're going to find the limit as x approaches infinity um, by taking the um, derivative of the natural log of x and the derivative of 2 times x to the 1 half power. Right, so the derivative of um, natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 2 times x to the 1 half power, that would be 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. So let's simplify that up a little bit. So we have 1 over x divided by uh, x to the negative 1 half. Dividing by x to the negative 1 half is the same as um, multiplying by the, the reciprocal. No, excuse me. <laughs> so <clears throat> x to the negative 1 half is the same as 1 over x to the 1 half. So if we have 1 over x divided by 1 over x to the 1 half, that's the same as 1 over x times the reciprocal, x to the to the 1 half, uh, and then we can simplify that. That's just going to be the, oops, the limit as x approaches infinity of, we're going to have 1 over x to the 1 half, and that's going to go to 0, right? If you've got, 1 isn't changing, right? And if you take 1 and you're dividing it by more and more and more and more and more and more pieces, eventually that's going to go to 0. Oops, there we go. Uh, one last piece of advice, uh, don't automatically assume that L'Hopital is the best way to go. Uh, here we have two examples, it is the same example, um, one, using, one not using L'Hopital's rule and one using L'Hopital's rule. So it's sine of x cubed all over sine to the 3x. Um, here we can split that up, remember sine to the 3x is the same as um, sine of the x, all, sine x all cubed. So um, using that little rule there, uh, so x cubed here, he needs an, so we have sine of x cubed. If we have, if we take the sine of something and we have the same something in the denominator, the limit as x approaches zero of that, that's just one, okay? So this one here, oops, that limit goes to one. Uh, and here this is sine of 3 to the x, that's the same as uh, sine x all cubed. Okay? Um, if we multiply this one here by x cubed, you have to multiply the one on top there by x cubed. Um, that also is going to go to 1, that's going to go to 1 cubed, uh, and you've got 1 times 1 cubed is 1. And that one was a really easy limit. Look at what it looks like down uh, here using L'Hopital's rule. Um, the number of times you have to to take the derivative, you have to take the um, the derivative, uh, gets a little unwieldy here. So um, you can see that sometimes L'Hopital's rule is not the best choice if you can do it a little bit more simply. So um, that's the only reason I leave this one in here. Um, I have two more examples. Um, I'm going to see if you, I'm going to let you try and figure these out. And then I'm going to put the answer with all the steps and see if you got the right answer. And then if you have more questions, just see me. Uh, I'd be happy to go over L'Hopital's rule. I can't possibly show you all the different examples that there, there are um, because um, there are many times where you're working on something and you decide, you know, hey, L'Hopital's rule may be the way to go. Um, 
you'll just kind of have to uh, encounter them as you go along. Um, but I have one example here, one example here. You can kind of quiz yourself and see if you get the right answer, and I'll put the answers up. Um, so I hope you found this lesson informative, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Next lesson. Bye.